action news this noon is the child at the center of one of Philadelphia's highest profile unsolved mysteries now finally identified. Moments ago, Philadelphia investigators identified the so-called boy in the box as Joseph Augustus Zarelli. The child's body was found in a cardboard box on the side of what was Susquehanna Road in Fox Chase back in 1957. Now, 65 years later, we finally know his name. Action News reporter Maggie Kent is live from Spring Garden, where police just made public this major development. Maggie. Sarah and Brian, that name, Joseph Augustus Zarelli, giving hope and peace to a lot of these investigators who have worked this case for that 65 years, decades of dogged investigation coming to an end thanks to DNA and new technology. This is a resolution, but by no means is this a happy ending to a tragic story. This four-year-old boy died of blunt force trauma, and he was found in the Fox Chase neighborhood in 1957. We now know that Zarelli was born in West Philadelphia to two parents and had a number of siblings. Again, in 57, that detective work began when they found the young boy in a cardboard box, nude, malnourished, and fatally beaten. And all of these years, despite investigators' best efforts, he never had a name until today. Now, DNA was collected in 1998 and once again in 2019. It was that evidence which finally led detectives to a break. The DNA matched up with another sample in a genealogy database. It connected little Zarelli to his mother. And then police were able to find two siblings from that family, one of which provided them with their DNA sample. That matched up with birth records, and police were able to identify America's unknown child as Joseph Augustus Zarelli, born January 13th, 1953. When people think about the boy in the box, a profound sadness is felt, not just because a child was murdered, but because his entire identity and his rightful claim to own his existence was taken away. Joseph has a number of siblings on both the mother and father's side who are living, and it is out of respect for them that their parents' information remain confidential. The second question is obviously going to be, do we know who was responsible for Joseph's death? The answer at this time is unfortunately no. We have our suspicions as to who may be responsible, but it would be irresponsible of me to share these suspicions as this remains an active and ongoing criminal investigation. Now, police say there was an item of clothing found back in 1957 that they're continuing to test for DNA evidence to get a clearer picture of exactly what happened here. They went on to say that Joseph had siblings from both his mother and his father's side. They know who his parents are, but of course, they're not naming them at this time. There's still an investigation as to how he died and who was responsible. But they do note that because this happened 65 years ago, there is a very strong chance that there will be no arrests made in this case. The Vidoc Society, which is a society of former detectives who have worked for decades on this case, say that this brings them closure and that they will be putting a name on that gravesite in Ivy Hill Cemetery very soon. We're live at police headquarters. Maggie Kent, Channel 6 Action News. Sarah. Justin.